Hi everyone, and welcome to this mini lecture on the discussion guidelines for this course. Discussions take up a major part of this course. They are 25% of your overall grade, and they will occur every week throughout the course, from the getting started module all the way to the final module. And participation generally requires you to provide one direct response to the prompt, that is the question, you need to provide your own response to it, and three peer responses, that is re replying to your peers um, that have provided their direct responses. And really the purpose behind this is to for students to kind of integrate and have a good, meaningful, purposeful dialogue with one another and the instructor around the course content for that week and really try to make sense about what the what was covered and how we can connect it to the overall conversation of the course or in our daily lives. So each module discussion, as I said, will have the direct discussion, which will have required uh, one post responding to the prompt, and that's due typically by Thursday. So it's due by the end of day on Thursday, but I really encourage you to get it in earlier than that. Don't wait till 11 o'clock on Thursday evenings. I, this does happen, um, and students run into problems, or they realize they're missing something, and they end up being late, which of course hurts their overall grade. Hurts their grade for that week. Your post needs to be at least 200 words, and those are 200 of your own words. If you include quotations of any sort, those don't count. So you have to subtract that number from your total word count. You have three responses uh, to your peers' thoughts, and those are due by Sunday. So the idea is that everybody will be posting by Thursday their initial response. Then, by th by Sunday, you should have replied or, or gotten into conversations with... with th you should have at least three responses to your peers by Sunday. Those responses need to be at least a hundred words each, so that you are providing a substantial substantial response. You're not just saying, wow, that's cool, or gee, that's interesting, but actually really thinking about and responding to what's being said. So that makes it a total of four posts each week, and that's what you want to make sure and, and be aware of, that is that you need to meet four posts to get full credit. Each week there's also an open discussion. This open discussion is there for students to, you know, throw out different things that they've come across that relate to the week or relate to the content. Uh, this is an area where students are not required to participate, but if they do participate, there's opportunity for extra credit or for bonus points. And what you should remember is so these are optional and it really, you want to think about these as if there's something connected to the module that week, you want to post in the open discussion if it doesn't fall under whatever the prompt is or the question is of the directed discussion. And as I said, these will be beneficial to those that participate, but they won't be detrimental to those who don't. Alright, so for the expectations and concerns, kind of what we want to think about with the discussions, you want to apply the course material of the module in all meaningful and specific ways. Uh, I really am looking at these for students to show what they've taken from the, the various material of that week, whether it's the, the chapter that we read or the video that was required. I'm really looking for some, some substantial considerations. So what does that look like? That means move beyond the course material and instructor's points. Don't just echo what I said or what the course material said. Really try to either provide a solid example that hasn't been addressed before, provide a solid critique, you know, really be thinking beyond just what's been said or thinking about how you can apply that or, or get further into that. Use ideas, concepts, and, uh, or material that aren't already covered by your peers. Uh, so in this instance, you want to avoid where you can repetition. You don't want to just be saying what everybody else is saying, especially when you get into replying. Uh, you want to think of, you want to think about giving authentic, critical, individual responses. Clearly and critically discuss one of their readings and how it relates to the prompt. So here, you know, I really do often want to see a direct reference, a direct connection to whatever it is that we're reading. 
it's often easy to, you know, students often don't mind watching the material that we watch, but I know, and I've seen in the past, they often avoid reading the material that they're supposed to read. So that's one of the things I'm going to be looking for is an actual clear, you know, reference point to the reading or to something specific within the reading. Uh, students are you're encouraged to use external material uh, when it's relevant, but this should really be supplemental to what you're discussing. This should be either an aside. It can be to prove your point, but n it needs to be part of your discussion. You can't just say, "Oh, look at this website," and assume that's your post. You have to tell us what that website is, how it relates. You really have to integrate it into your discussion. It shouldn't just be a one-off. Um, and in terms of replying to your peers, you know, this can come in different different ways. It can come by extending or further developing a peer's point. So they say something and you kind of elaborate on that. You add more to it. You push the discussion for it further. It can also be in challenging, albeit respectfully, the way the peer has presented uh, his or her arguments. So in this case, you know, they may say, you know, I believe X because of Y, and you say, um, that, that seems interesting, but if we consider Z and we see what happened to T, you know, this makes much more sense. So challenging your peers on some of their ideas in a respectful way uh, certainly would, you know, is certainly useful for, for the purposes of discussion. All right, so when you're sitting down to post, here are some things to keep in mind. First, prior to responding to the, to the prompt, make sure you've done all the required readings and viewings um, of that week. In other words, don't start to respond to the discussion if you haven't actually taken in all the work because the discussion is based upon the work. I would recommend as you are reading, watching, or listening to the course material, you want to take notes. You want to write out your thoughts or identify things that you thought were relevant or that connected. This makes writing your post much easier. Um, brainstorm different thoughts about the discussion question. And, and with that, I would say, you know, read the discussion question before you go and do, do all of the course materials. Uh, this way you have that in the back of your head so you can always have that as a, as a framing device or as a way to think about the material. Um, really, I would say con compose your response in a word processor program such as Microsoft Word. Um, the reason for this is it's much easier to edit. You can also do a grammar check. Uh, Angel doesn't have a grammar check. It does have a spell check, but it doesn't have a grammar check. And it also allows for you to if something were to happen, such as you get logged out of Angel unexpectedly, at least if you have a you have it written in a Word document, you haven't lost it. You just have to log back into Angel and then copy and paste it. All right. So, what is a substantial discussion question response? Um, direct reference to one of the readings, as well as other course materials or supplemental materials. It includes citations, particularly when you're talking about specifics. Uh, uses key terms, ideas, and concepts from the course readings or lectures. Develops the discussion further, doesn't just repeat what's been said. Exceeds 200 word count. Is clear and grammatically correct prose. And if the instructor asks a direct question of the student after he or she has posted their the initial post response, uh, the student needs to actually respond to the instructor or he or she will lose credit. That is, if if you post something and I ask for clarification and that clarification never comes along, then that's going to impact your grade that week for discussion. What makes for a good student post response? So this is a response to your peers. Uh, the, respond, the responder acknowledges the student's point. The responder elaborates on the student's points by connecting the student's points to other facets uh, that shouldn't say American literature, it should say of popular culture or other course material. The responder push it, pushes the discussion further with complex questions, questions that require more than simple answers. Uh, the responder exceeds the 100 word count, clear and grammatically correct prose, and the responder has spread out his, resp his or her responses over several days and not posted all of them on the last day of the discussion. So I'm also looking for you to actually be interactive and not just go on Thursday and go on Sunday and not actually have a discussion. 
The responder provides a range of responses to peers, doesn't just say the same thing three times to three different classmates. This is actually important in that I, I've seen this happen where the student essentially says the same thing just kind of dressed up a little bit different to three different people and I really want to see three different thoughts around the readings. I mean honestly if you look at what the what the discussion is, uh, discussion board is asking of you, it's asking you for you to have four different thoughts about the content this week and I think that's not unreasonable to ask. Alright, so those are the guidelines. If you have questions, by all means, let me know, and thank you for watching.